How often should you look at your investments? How often do you wanna be happy with your investments? I've got my favorite stock market investing statistic. I've got that and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard, I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, my, my favorite statistic about investing in the stock market. I've got that upcoming. But first, if you are investing, then you're going to fall into one of three categories. And you get in trouble when you have an identity crisis and you don't know who you are. Okay, so, so just bear with me here. You're either a trader an investor or a saver, okay? Traders are individuals that are very comfortable buying a certain number of individual stocks, so, you know, 40 shares of Apple, at 9.45 in the morning, selling them at a certain price at 11.30, buying them back around 1.15, and then selling them near the close around 3.30. If that's not you, then you're not a trader, okay? And so, Individuals that are traders have a certain trading scheme, a trading strategy, a trading philosophy, and they're looking at the the moment by moment price movement of individual securities making decisions and very quick decisions. Now I would tell you this, is it possible to find swing trading or a trading strategy that can work in many environments? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Is it easy? No. So many people think they've found a trading strategy or they've got a scheme and, and they can just do this and then you know they wait till the price goes higher and then just sell and then do the same thing tomorrow and then same thing tomorrow. And a lot of people that will work in a certain stock market climate and then all of a sudden the stock market goes the, the, goes the wrong direction and they end up really in a lot of financial trouble, okay? We saw that. At, with meme stocks and, and guys, in, in 2020 and 2021, all you needed to do was look to, to TikTok, TikTok finance and all of these folks that were, you know, staying at home and, and, and leaving their jobs or maybe they were out of work and they talked about how easy it was to trade and they've been washed out. There are just countless stories. So is it possible? Yes, absolutely. There are great trading strategies out there that need to be evolved and adapted and so on through different market conditions, but they can work. Is that the majority? No, no, it's very hard, very, very hard and extremely risky. So that's trading. Investing is for the long term. Investing, instead of looking at a price every single, you know, every hour or every minute, you're looking over long periods of time and saying, well, listen, I, I want investments that play great offense and great defense at the same time. It's like picking the top five to put out on the basketball, on the basketball court at one time. When you've got the ball, those five are playing defense. When you don't have the ball, or excuse me, those five are playing offense. When you don't have the ball, those five are playing defense. Okay, so, so we know markets are cyclical. Let me get broad diversification, the right strategies, but they're not daily and in, in moment by moment trading. It's over the long term and rebalancing. And so that's investing. That's the majority of us. You don't need some you know, really fancy trading in and out strategy for that. You need a couple of strategies because diversification has an Achilles heel as well during a crisis time. Everything, you know, correlation goes to one, sorry for the jargon there, but everything seems to drop at the same time and coming out of a crisis, not everything, you know, explodes at the same time. And so you're going to want to have multiple strategies working with a CFP, but a, that's an investor long term. And then a saver, a saver is in a separate category as well. And that is someone who maybe is invested in the stock market, but only wants to invest when it's going up. And then all of a sudden, when it goes down for a month or a quarter or a bad day, they instantly are saying, I, I gotta get out of this. I gotta get out of this. Versus, you know, hey, the stock market over time has, has, has from peak to trough, averages about a 14% decline each and every year. No one likes it, but it's normal. But over a long period of time, stock market still averages 9, 10%, 11%, depending on what you're looking at. And so I'm comfortable with those gyrations, you know, in exchange for the patience of those long-term returns. Savers are not. Savers are not comfortable with, with those gyrations. If, it's, if the stock market's supposed to deliver 10% on average, they expect 10% every single year with very little volatility, that's not accurate, that's not true. Therefore, savers 
oftentimes have an identity crisis and try to be investors and then they get spooked out after an investment you know the stock market goes down and they go back to being savers versus investors sometimes have the identity crisis they think they're traders they start wanting to make lots of moves doesn't really pan out and then they have to go back to either investor or saver so makes sense three categories if you're investing now my favorite statistic on the stock market and and here's here's who i'm speaking to for those of you that are long-term investors, which is where I am, and, and that should be the majority of us. For those of you that are long-term investors, it doesn't make sense to look at your investments every day. It would make sense to look at your investments every day if you were trading every day. But if that's not your time horizon, then I would encourage you to expand your viewpoint, lift your eyes off of, you know, down and lift them up towards the horizon as opposed to thinking every single day, my long-term investment strategy is going to hang on the performance of every single day. And, and here's why. My favorite stock market statistic is how often do you wanna be happy? To me, if the market's up, if my investments are up, I'm happy. If my investments are down or the stock market's down, then I'm sad. Well, how often do you want those mood swings? Take a look at what history tells us. And what I like about this is this is going back before the Great Depression, right before the Great Depression. This, this includes all of that. So 56% of the time, the stock market is positive that day. So I've often said, if you look at your investments every day, half the time you're gonna be happy, half the time you're gonna be sad. And that starts to distort your viewpoint on, well, does long-term investing actually work? Because 50-50, it's 50% it's of the time, it's not. For, or in this case, you know, 56% of the time it works, 44% of the time you're, you're disappointed. That's if you look at things every single day. 63% of the time the stock market's positive on a monthly basis. So if you're looking at your, you know, if you still get statements in the mail and you look at them every single month, well, 60% of the time you're gonna be happy, but 40% of the time you're not, you're gonna be frustrated. That's still, I still don't like those odds. 75% of the time on a yearly basis, the stock market goes up. Now I start to like those odds. Three out of every four years, the stock market is positive. Ha, huh. yeah. So if I can deal with the emotions on the day to day or even the month to month, and, and I can manage those emotions, then that gives me the opportunity to enjoy three out of every four years. But it gets better, and this is why I'm talking to long-term investors. 88% of the time, the stock market's positive over five years. 95% of the time, the stock market is positive over 10 years. Very rare, over a 10-year time period, and oftentimes that snapped up really quick, where you know within that 11th year or, or something like that, the, it, it, it returns and becomes positive. Because the data shows over 20 years, 100% of the time, the stock market has been positive. Could something change out there in the future? Sure, sure, I, I, you know, we don't know, but the stock market is the cumulative value of the best and, and most well-run enterprises on the planet. And therefore, good, you know, fairly good odds that this long historic, you know, historical you know, returns and those patterns will continue. Therefore, how often do you wanna be frustrated or mad at your investments? Well, daily, if you're, you know, if you wanna leave it up to a coin flip. But more practical is looking at your investments once a year or less frequently even. So what are the takeaways? What would I encourage you to do? Number one, you've got to make sure, if you don't have a sound investment strategy and philosophy, then I, I, then, then this doesn't even matter yet. Then, these, then this data doesn't even matter yet. Because first, you need to have a thoughtful, and planned out investment strategy that works over the long term, okay? That you're comfortable with over the long term and you understand, yes, it will go up and down, but this is what I'm holding, this is why, and, and therefore I trust this strategy, this philosophy over the long term. So start with that, and if you don't have that, work with your certified financial planner, have a second look at your overall investment strategies, that sort of thing. Make sure that you've got the, a sound investment strategy and philosophy in place. Second then, I would encourage you to not look at the investments or even the stock market every day or every month. Rarely would I suggest even every quarter. We suggest looking in at your investments maybe twice a year, if not once a year. If you have that urge to look at your investments more frequently, I would look at 
how many shares you have, not the value of those shares. I would look at buying shares. I'd look at growing the number of shares. I'd look at how many shares do you have today compared to where you had what you had a quarter ago, uh, six months ago, a year ago. I'd focus more on shares and share growth than on temporary pricing of those shares. And then finally, I, I would be working with a certified financial planner, a Sherpa, a guide, someone that is helping you craft the right investment strategy, helping you know when it would be time that, hey, this investment strategy has been tried and true, and yet this component is weak right now. This component needs to be replaced. This component needs to be adjusted, or this area has underperformed, but it's cyclically going to do that and we should stick with it. You should have a guide that's helping you with your investment philosophy, with your strategy, and with your patience to help you know when to make adjustments and when to ride through it. Work with your certified financial planner on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com, that's corhorn with K, wisemoneyshow.com, you can find us there as well, or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it, go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.